Hey all, Alex from Music Hub here, and today we'll be doing a review of the 1997 biography by Brian Newbold, Schubert, The Music and The Man. Franz Peter Schubert, born the 31st of January 1797 in Vienna, died the 19th of November 1828 in Vienna. Despite consistent poor health, only living to the age of 31, Schubert's compositional output was staggering during his brief lifetime, writing at a volume and pace that even Mozart would have been taken aback at. Whether it was the fusion of classical and romantic ideals in his symphonies, the extremely evocative nature of his chamber music, or his hundreds of diverse lieder, or songs, he was a linchpin in the evolutions of many different genres of classical music as the 19th century really came into its own. This book is written by Brian Newbold, born the 26th of February 1936 in Kettering, North Northamptonshire. He worked at the University of Leeds and the University of Hull as a theory professor, and like Barry Cooper did with Beethoven, Newbold has garnered recognition from his completion of unfinished Schubert works, namely the 7th, 8th, and 10th symphonies, the latter of which only existed in sketches before Newbold went in to work on it. His previous book, 1992, Schubert and the Symphony, focused on the symphonic works specifically, but this book that we're talking about here is a relatively standard full-length biography. As with other academic music biographies, there is an equal focus on the biography and the analysis, and Newbold chooses to approach it in a way that's unique to the other biographies that I've read. He splits Schubert's life into three distinct sections and alternates between the biographical details and the musical analysis in each section. And the biography is pretty good for the most part. I do take issue with Newbold's proclivity for asking these sorts of open-ended questions. It's not quite the same issue that I had with the James Monroe biography because Newbold doesn't use these questions as transitional points. He just sort of asks them and moves on. Maybe they're just ways of generating thoughts, but it gets a bit repetitive when you're doing it in four or five straight paragraphs, and that's not an exaggeration at all. But that hardly matters because the musical analysis is what you'd be coming here for anyways, and unsurprisingly, it's excellent. Newbold organizes this section into genre-specific subsections, which is a terrific tool for assisting with comprehension. And not just comprehension either, but it helps you appreciate how Schubert develops as a composer, both as a whole and also in these individual facets of his writing. I think that's valuable, even if it occasionally does mean jumping back and forth a few years at a time as Newbold kind of jumps between different subjects. The Lieder are especially interesting to read about because of how wildly different the melodic and accompaniment ideas are, and also of how fully formed Schubert's skills were at a young age, even at age 18 when he was composing songs like the classic Earl Koenig. In general, this is a very good academic biography that I would recommend if that's what you're looking for, although I will say that we are very overdue for a really great popular biography of Schubert. Maybe Jan Swafford can tackle that one next, only time will tell. But until then, if you're not a musical expert, I don't know if I'd wholeheartedly recommend this book, but it's still readable for the layperson, so um, still check it out. And that's all. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more reviews are to come. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time right here on Music Hub.